Hey y'all, welcome back to a Wednesday, September 4th, 2024 edition here on the Chase Thomas Podcast, where I'm still the aforementioned Chase Thomas coming to you live from Knoxville, Tennessee, Everything School HQ. We got a jam-packed show for you guys today. We got the more important issues guys back here on a Wednesday, as they do each and every week during the college football season. Yeah, this fall. Look out for it. More important issues every week here on this daily Tennessee Vols sports program. Uh, we talk about uh, the Chattanooga blowout win for the Vols on Saturday. We talk about uh, Dylan Sampson making the leap for Tennessee and then get into our NC State game picks and preview uh, for this weekend's uh, big top 25 SEC ACC challenge uh, against uh, the NC State Wolfpack in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. So all that more coming up next on today's edition of the program. And don't forget, folks, you can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Chase Thomas Podcast, like and subscribe. If you have not already done so and you want to watch this show, guess what? It's very easy when you check out our YouTube channel, full episodes, clips, shorts, all that good stuff over there on our channel. Well over 2,000 subs growing more and more each and every day. So if you've not already in your uh, you prefer to watch your podcasts. We got you covered on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Chase Thomas Podcast. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or however you get your podcasts. If you're listening to us right now on the audio format uh, and you have not already done so, uh, please first make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode here daily on the podcast. And also, if you like what you hear, uh, go ahead and leave this show a five-star rating and write us a review. It helps other people find the show and it helps this very show continue to grow. If you could take care of that today, I would greatly appreciate it um, because every little bit helps as we get bigger and bigger each and every day here on the program. You can also check me out at chasemospodcast.com where you can access to all of my previous episodes, information about the show, and everything we got going on here on Knoxville's number one independent Tennessee Vols sports podcast. You can also get in touch with me in the show at chase thomas podcast at gmail.com and read me over there every day at tpl tennessee all kinds of great editorial content i've got uh, going over there so if you're not reading me over at tpl tennessee and you want to read some more tennessee balls content you can do so by checking us out over there at the players lounge tennessee uh all right uncle darren Let's go. Chase Thomas podcast. The Chase Thomas podcast. Um, my nephew needs me to record. See, I hate. I already hate it. I hate it. All right, we're back here on the Chase Thomas podcast. I'm still the aforementioned Chase Thomas coming to you live from Knoxville, Tennessee. Everything School HQ. Joining me back again this week. Uh, they survived their first tailgate of the 2024 <laughs> Tennessee college football season. Landon Raby have more important issues. Landon, good evening, sir. How are you? Good, man. Yeah, uh, ready for it. And you, you mentioned that we survived the first tailgate. Um, mm -hmm. Threw away a lot of food. I, I don't. I think we over we overcompensated with the food. We told everybody to bring something. Everybody brought everything in their pantry. So um, what was on the menu? Of, um, it was breakfast food. So just okay. kind of we had everything from chicken minis to. Um, uh, Bo Bojangles, we had eggs, bacon on the Blackstone, we had some pancakes, so there, there was a lot wow. of everything going on. Okay, I mean, the chicken minis would hurt to throw away, because they're just small, and you're like, can I, I, I'm just going to feel sick, I'm just going to keep downing these, because they're really good, yeah. and I just... <clears throat> There's, I don't know. That'd be tough. That was about to the away. only thing. That I was, was going to say, I think those things got taken care of. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Yeah. I was going to say, like, make sure they are protected. I did a lot of that on my own. So, <laughs> Also here, a uh, fellow co-host of More Important Issues and uh, first tailgate survivor, Caleb Mitchell. Caleb, good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I'll never complain after a Tennessee win. Doesn't matter the opponent. Doesn't matter how it happened. A win is a win is a win is a win. How was, uh, how was the uh, tailgate? Like, uh, what was the... Um, uh, a the temperature because I heard like we had uh, Dante and Caleb on um, for uh, over at TPL Tennessee this week and um, talking about uh, that comes out actually in the next 30 minutes here um, about like the jerseys where they like were walking out and they were already like there the, it was a different shade of gray like on mm -hmm. uh, Dante's back before the game even got started just because of how hot it was and yeah. in those uh, smoky grays but yeah it, it was probably like I get it. The in-state foe, you want to rock the tri-star, get the smoky gray out of there. You did it last year against Austin P. But for a 12 o'clock kick in 90 degree temperature, it felt a little hot. How, how did y'all deal with the heat? 
Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, so the the tailgate was fine up until about eleven. It, it started getting warm. Everybody mm-hmm. got under the tents to get out of the sun, and it, it got warm in there. Um, but vibes were still high, and I think it was good until probably like the end of the first quarter. I'm like, okay, like I've I've kind of had enough of the sun. Yeah, I'm out. So um, your seats were in the sun. Yes, definitely in the sun. Yeah, I can't get away. <laughs> That's like one of those two. I'm sure y'all spotted like the guys. There's always four or five that you spot shirtless or in the overalls with just baking. And you see them in the mm-hmm. third quarter and they're just pink. And you're like, oh, yeah. your Sunday is going to be brutal. Like you have <laughs> yes, no like you have no idea. Like the double fisting and the twisted tees is fine right now. What a wait to you tomorrow. It's just brutal. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I not don't familiar. envy those people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not worth it, Um, which is my experience of i did not go to the game oh yes i I think i told some people there i think there's some season ticket privilege i uh, have been very privileged in life i've been to many many tennessee football games many either home openers or early season games where it's 94 96 maybe feels Mm -hmm. like 98 in there and against an opponent like that i just i don't i don't think it's a win scenario for myself i'm miserable i'm hot I'm a, I'm a chafer, um, so I'm probably chafed. I don't don't do not like it. It's miserable. Uh, so I gave my tickets to someone at the tailgate, which is a bonus of our tailgate. Sometimes there's tickets floating around. There you go. My my seats would have been in the sun, so they were hard to give away. Everyone that their first question: yeah. free tickets? Are they in the? Are they under the shade? No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so that got that got turned down. Uh, but the guy I gave them to was very excited. So it, that was a win win for me. I didn't have to sit in the sun. I got to sit on my couch and enjoy it very yeah. much so um and i'm i would have loved to see nico in his first appearance i'll be there in charlotte oh you're going are y'all yeah, both you, going yeah, yeah we're both going okay <laughs> yeah but not together separate trips we'll meet up but yeah interesting okay have you yeah. have you been to uh what is it called I, is it bank of, bank america? of america yeah mm-hmm. we went have for have, jeremy pruitt's debut as oh. the Tennessee head coach yeah. yeah, that was a tough one. That was a that tough was one. Fun. Hopefully the first play is a lot better than that. We'll, we'll get to... <laughs> was the Indiana we'll... game a couple years ago, the bowl game, was that in Charlotte? or was, was uh, that? that was the Tax Slayer Bowl. Is that in Orlando? Yeah. Is that an Orlando one? Yeah. I no, that's in Jacksonville, right? part. That was part of me. I was like, yes. Belk Bowl? Yeah. Okay. Um, they all blend together. They're all just yeah. somewhere yeah. over there, and you're just like in these NFL stadiums. I'm like, where mm. was that bowl game? Um, well, that'll be fun. Uh, yeah. It should be uh, like you get an all day tailgate experience, so you get you get mm-hmm. to take your time before having to get into the stadium, and you don't. Uh, it, it'll be interesting because I I think NC State has an underrated fan base. I think nationally that uh, talking to NC State folks, really rabid one, very realistic fans i think they're just the the happy to be there um they just want right. to compete i don't think you're going to get into i i don't know if we talked about this last week or not but one of the more stunning things i don't know if you, y'all saw this but um when evansville was here uh for the weekend in the supers mm-hmm. I, the evansville fans the most boisterous like cocky um rowdy small like fan base i'd ever encountered here in knoxville like in terms of just like expectations versus reality where i'm walking around market square with my wife on sunday brunch and they're just barking and yelling at tennessee fans like it's over like we're taking this like the supers i i, I respected it they were so not phased by tennessee and everything else um i just don't get that vibe from nc state fans i think they're like nine three ten and two it's we'll be fine like it's i but i hope both teams play hard um i just <laughs> yeah. uh, i don't think they're going into it like oh Nico, it's done. Tony Gibson's defense. We're ready. It's over. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like Evansville is more like nothing to lose kind of cocky. Yeah. Don't blame him. Um, Got to. Yeah. But, but like you are absolutely right. Like in that in Lindsey Nelson, that group was rowdy as yeah. any group, any visiting group besides probably an LSU um, mm-hmm. fan base that I saw. They traveled and they were loud and they were just like giving it to Tennessee fans. Like, what's up? Like, are y'all do it, about to do this again? Because I mean, I mean, they were looking at it as like, are y'all gonna be the number one overall seed and lose in the supers and back to back years? Like, we're yeah. playing with house money. Uh, but no, that's something that will be forgotten. Is Evansville was just they had Tennessee on the ropes and we were all yeah. doing a little uh, a type of way on that Christian Sunday. Christian Moore had something to say about that. 
<laughs> but you know uh that that's uh for a spring pod we'll maybe revisit yeah. um when it comes to what's coming up uh or, actually let's get into chattanooga before we get into the nc state all together here but 72 hours post chattanooga caleb what are you still thinking about from the win on saturday against the mocks right there's not i think if you're a uh... A person that's followed just football, especially college football, I guess, um, for a long time, you you know, there's not much to really take away from that win. There, it, it it's a it's a it's a buy, and like you you paid them to to come get beat kind mm-hmm. of game. Um, I think Landon said, I think his exact words were, "It was a 66 point victory." You those don't come come along very easily. If you don't score 66 against Chattanooga, you certainly won't. Or 69 against Chattanooga, you certainly won't anywhere else. Um, so, I mean, yes, there's some positives, but the takeaways are, are difficult because your opponent is much lesser than what you'll see from here on out. The biggest one for me, and that's stuck really since that throw to to Dante Thornton for a touchdown down down the east sideline, Nico can throw the football. Um, I said it the other night, from for person watching football for the first time to an NFL scout, if they watch Nico throw the ball on Saturday, they're all excited. They're all impressed. Um, so I, I, that's my biggest takeaway is that Tennessee has a quarterback that can throw the football down the field, um, at a good rate. He can throw it outside the hash marks. He can throw it across the middle. He is calm, composed, poised. I know is a big quarterback word that leak, that people like to use. Um, if you, if you're not, ex- if you weren't excited for Nico now, you might not have a pulse. You, you have to be excited after Chattanooga. And I'm, that's not to say I might still say, it, but that's not to say he'll win the Heisman. Um, but. Tennessee, I think, has improved at the quarterback position from quality in Joe Milton. Um, and obviously, we'll see it going forward, but I think has a good chance to replicate what Hendon Hooker was able to do in 2022. I think it's better. Like, one of the things, I don't know if you feel this way, Landon, where I think people are – because, like, I, I love Hendon. Hendon was a dude in a lot of different ways, one of the strongest just quarterback mentalities that you love where he could just wipe stuff and was just an assassin – um he did exactly what he needed to didn't throw picks didn't put the ball in arm's way um all-time great competitor at the position but when he was uh, when things broke down for hendon he was still someone who was taking off it with his legs and he was Mm -hmm. still looking to run when things broke down which was good it helped tennessee significantly especially uh in the florida and alabama game that stand out to me but the difference we saw yesterday or on saturday was nico i mean he already showed what he can do with his legs in the iowa game what he flashed here was, okay, there are three linebackers. Like Aaron Murray did a great uh, video breakdown of some of the throws that Nico was making on Saturday. And where uh, I think it was, I think it was Brew or Brazel over the middle um, in a dig route. And he just layers it above the three linebackers. And before he's even open, like he just, he trusted his, his instincts and his anticipation to hit that throw and hit him in stride. I mean, he hit Dante in stride multiple times. I look at it and I'm like, folks, you can you can settle in here. Like we, I understand it's two games, but it's okay to just say, no, this is different. Like Tennessee right. actually has their star, like Heisman type quarterback here for the next two years. Like it's barring injury, there is no oh well, let's wait and see what's going to happen. No, he's going to be good. Like is he going to go through Absolutely. some growing pain? Sure, but the talent is real and his ability to throw off platform and throw like the Brazel throw on the right hand side early where Brazel just barely brings it in on the side like Hendon can't make that throw Hendon can make a lot of throws Joe can't make that throw that is an NFL type type window just put it exactly where Brazel can bring it in with the 6-5 frame and it's just it's gonna be fun like I think it's Mm -hmm. just false sense like if he's healthy and keep him healthy that's the main thing and keep him upright then it's going to be special for the next two years, Landon. Yeah, I kind of left Saturday kind of like Oliver Twist. Like, please, sir, I want some more. Like, that's <laughs> that's what I wanted. I, I could not wait. I can't wait till till this Saturday to see mm-hmm. it again. Um, you know, it, it's it's must-see TV kind of like, you know, going back to baseball. That, that's what that team was. Um, I, I'm hoping that that is the point – that that is the – the rate this this team can go um i think hennon deserves a ton of credit because i don't think you get nico without the year hennon hooker had um i don't think you know it, it's it's kind of nice like having nico right now because you get him for two years 
But also after that, you look at what Tennessee has coming in at the quarterback position, you're like, hey, we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, Even just look at Jake Merklinger. He looks like a guy that has grown a lot in his short time at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, like he's the TBD. It's like, are you going to do the Gunnar Stockton thing? Are you going to do the three years or the Carson Beck thing? Like that's the best thing with Jake is Mm -hmm. it's just with Nico at the next two. Like you're then it might be an open competition with a sophomore George and we'll cross that bridge. We got a long way to go before we get to that. But yeah, the Jake thing is just more. Yeah, it's just but it it is kind of like mapped out a little bit where that is. That's the case. Whereas a couple of years ago, I mean, we didn't know who the heck the quarterback was going to (laughs) be. Yeah three or four years down the road, but you, you know who your guys are. And, um, I wait, mean, so you're he, out on Harrison Bailey. <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I was all in. And, and, and so that's what I'm trying to be careful with being all in on Nico. I, I say that and I have the lay right here, but, um, <clears throat> but I, like, I'm trying to hold my horses a little bit yeah. and not be all in on this team that they're going to be in the college football playoff just after a, a win over Chattanooga. But, I mean, and Saturday, if the same thing kind of happens, you, you see this team just blow out a a team that was a top 25 or I guess is a top 25 team. I don't know if they will be after we beat them. Um, but, I mean, I, I think there's – it's kind of telling. You know, I, I don't think the AP poll took a ton of stock in Tennessee beating Chattanooga. I don't – the coaches poll did a little bit more than the AP poll. But um, – I'm interested to see kind of how things change and the hype keeps rolling after Tennessee beats NC State. Speaking well, into existence. Yeah. Hey, I like it. And also, <laughs> the FPI moved them up. Like ESPN's FPI power index are now at seventh. Um, yeah. They have a 10% chance of making the national title right now. The number is like them 10%. Like, I just think. Oh, it's crazy. I know. And it scares Tennessee fans because, like, you haven't played a big game yet with Nico. Mm-hmm. But. The recipe is just clearly evident, and that's something you can still see in the Chattanooga game, which was Tyree West popped. Like Tyree West was the number one graded run defender for Tennessee on Saturday, third in pass rush. Um, Tyler Barron still cooking for Miami, like he's still a really good player, and that's something they had to replace this offseason. But they have dudes. Like Tyree West was in the class with Pierce; he was the number twenty-one overall defensive line uh, recruit in that twenty twenty-two class. Um, and he's kind of forgotten about because he's just been kind of buried on the depth chart. You know, some guys are just they've yeah. waited, grown and gotten ready for their opportunity. And he seems like someone who's going to pop there. And the recipe for modern college football success, Caleb, is Nico and elite defensive line or elite defensive line play and elite quarterback play. And there's no one in the country like even Georgia. I'm sitting there watching Georgia while uh, watching Tennessee and Georgia doesn't have the dudes who scare you out wide anymore. Like the lad and the Bowers guys are gone. Like Arian Smith, mm-hmm. eh, a little bit like Lennon Humphreys had that one play, but it's, it's more, it, they don't scare you. Like, but Tennessee really, really struggled um, over the last couple of years dealing with Georgia and for a multitude of reasons, but to get to that point and to really start competing with the big dogs in Alabama too, who looked really good on Saturday, what Tennessee's going to have to have is they're going to have to have elite quarterback play, which we saw like that's, they got that checked off going to have healthy veteran offensive line. They look good. Healthy Lance Hurd was fine leading the pack. Andre Carrick was healthy. He's good. Cooper's healthy, ready to go. They're fine there. Um, I do think it was strange that Campbell and Davis were like rotating as much as they were at right tackle, but maybe that's just ease Campbell into it. Yeah. Um, back into uh, just getting ready and being overly cautious. But then uh, defensive line with Pierce only playing 10 snaps. and They just compl- can completely control the line of scrimmage. Like he didn't have to be there. And that's where Tennessee's at, where they can just, all right, Herring, <laughs> here's your opportunity. Jordan yeah. Ross, um, you want to go block a punt on special teams? Like you, you just can't keep the amount of talent at bay. So I think Tennessee fans, it's like, this makes sense in terms of a deep college football playoff run and a special season, because some of these guys are gonna be gone. Like Omar Norman Lott, Amari Thomas, Bryson Eason, James Pierce. A lot of, they're gonna have to replace a bunch in the defensive line. They're gonna have to replace a bunch on the offensive line after this year. Um, they have a lot of in-house talent. They're gonna have to be in the, active in the portal. But I think Tennessee fans who are worried about getting a little too ahead of their skis, I actually think they have a better path this year than next year of making a deep playoff run mm-hmm. because they're kind of taking a lot of people by storm with Nico because there's not a full mm-hmm. season of tape on Nico yet. Um, and just because they're just, I don't think they're going to be as deep and as old on the, in the trenches that they are this year. And I think it, it matters. Um, I think it's something to be extremely excited about right now. And that's why I think the numbers really like Tennessee going into this NC state game. Uh, absolutely. And I mean, looking at all the talent, I think this is a, this is a season that is 
critical for Josh Heupel for a lot of reasons, mm-hmm. but more so because he has the the group. He has he has a solid solid bunch to pick from, and when when and if the losses come, and and Georgia is going to absolutely be a test at at Norman's going to be a test. Um, I'm feeling better about that Florida game. I know the last time we talked, battered vol <laughs> syndrome held me down a little bit. It's mm-hmm. getting better. I'm not willing to to lock it in as a 30 point W yet, but um, Alabama absolutely will still be a test. They they don't look like they've really missed a beat, and, and I think Kalen DeBoer is an excellent coach, so it'll take quite a quite some time for him to I mean, just don't pray on Alabama's downfall, SEC yeah. fans. Um, so I think this will be one of the one of the tougher tests for for Josh Heupel. Just in he has to do an excellent job coaching, and I, I do. Think when you play some of these tougher opponents, he'll still have to really find ways to gain ground, be creative in, in his play calling. Um, defense is going to have to find a way to create turnovers in some of those games to to have a chance to win them. Um, so I, I think this is absolutely one of his tougher groups because the expectations are high, but you're still lacking in some areas. But you have a group that can compete, and and I think if we want to compare it to a, a really good coach on campus, this feels like. Josh Heupel's 2022 team in that mm-hmm. there's too much talent not to win it all. Whew. I think if they're healthy, Landon, they have the talent to get there. I still worry a little. I mean, Larry Johnson did not grade well at backup left tackle in this game. Yeah. I think having Dane Davis still be like, I like Dane Davis, but he still because you're you have these young blue chippers who are just not ready yet. I think they're going to be good players. I think William Satterwhite's the center of the future. I like Bennett Warren a lot. Um, I like Max Anderson. There's Kate there. Jesse Perry got a lot of snaps. It looks like he's mm-hmm. going to be a good quality swing tackle um, in the future. But you got to get through this this year <clears throat> healthy. Like the offensive yeah. line just has to stay healthy. That's something that was evident too on Saturday. Is just Cooper's obviously got to be upright. But you need luck. And I think when people get on like, oh, well, that's part of the game. You need injury mm-hmm. luck. Like part oh, yeah. of, we can say Tennessee can make the national title game, which is not outlandish at this point, but it's going to require luck uh, in the injury department. They have to have it. Luck in the injury department, luck in, in some ways the ball bounces, luck in mm-hmm. some way calls come. Absolutely. And, and I guess I should reiterate, I'm not someone who believes Josh Heupel should win it all with this talent. But when you look at the four years he's had at Tennessee, this is by far his most talented group. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with the way the schedule lines up, it's not overly difficult. Um, there are there is that that hard stretch that's always going to be. I think it's Johnny Majors that that says um, they remember what you do in in November, and um, it's really the October stretch for Tennessee this year. Yeah, uh, they're going to remember what you did in October. And, and so, I, I'm not someone who's saying, "Hey, this group is this should win it all." This this is like if if you don't, what are your excuses? Um, just looking at this this talent group the way the 12 team playoff plays out i mean you could be talking about having a buy in your first college football playoff appearance if you've somehow managed to win an sec title um just get so there. It's, like it's been a while yeah, no, abs- get there absolutely get, get to atlanta and, and see if the ball bounces away right yeah um but uh, i think this is by i mean by far and away his most talented group that's at his ones when you get down to the twos it gets a little shakier um certainly <laughs> some of the more probably some of the more talent he's had but still um, get shaker. So yeah, ton of luck. I'm not saying he he's you got to go win it all. Or you're on the hot seat or something, but this feels like if, if you do your job as a coach, you're going to be in a position that you really like come December. Um, yeah. Now I, I still don't, I'm still not calling for 12 and 0 myself. Um, but I think, I think Josh Hype would be very pleased uh, if he just does his job. Well, Landon, does it feel like, cause this is something I wrote down on Saturday that I, I did not anticipate it because I think all the running backs kind of popped here uh, on Saturday. But Dylan Sampson feels like he's at another level. Like I, I didn't. I thought Dylan Sampson would be maybe a little. I shouldn't say step down, just different than Jalen Wright. But Jalen Wright was the engine that was oh, yeah. just that got Tennessee rolling. And there's a reason he's in the NFL now. But Dylan is a different kind of Swiss Army knife weapon with just his ability out of the backfield catching balls in space. Um, I don't think he has the vision that Jalen Wright has in between the tackles and stuff, but I do think he's going to be more of a workhorse back than I had anticipated coming into the year. It just feels like he's different and found it. I mean, that first drive, it was all Dylan Sampson. Like Dylan Sampson yeah. to me has made a huge jump um, from last season to this season. Do you see the same thing? Yeah. I, I saw him make a lot of guys miss where in the past he's kind of ran away mm-hmm. from guys and kind of used that speed. But I, I feel like, Yesterday, I mean, he was juking, spin move, you know, you know, just kind of had that that jitter bug to him that, you know, I think he, he's kind of been like 
more of a, a smaller back than Jabari Small and Jalen Ride. So he was always just kind of like thrown into that category, but he really hasn't showed yeah. it a ton. But he, I thought he did on Saturday, and I think he's got guys around him, like at, at receiver and, and tied in that they didn't have last year. So I think it makes Jalen Ride's la- last year even more impressive. But this year, like, he doesn't have to be the bell cow, but he can. Yeah. And I think that's what makes Tennessee dangerous. Like, you don't have to have Dylan Sampson go for 120 yards and win a football game. I think last year, Jalen Wright had to produce or Tennessee was going to be in trouble. Yeah. Um, so I, I like that about him. I, I think he he does have a little bit more confidence. You know, you see the clips and everything, him talking in the huddle. You know, it just seems like he's – kind of honed in on that that leadership guy yeah. uh, for Tennessee. And, um, you know, he, he's he's kind of had to be in that room because everybody else is so young. Yeah. Um, well, and, also, Nico's just kind of seems like an introvert, right? Like, he's just yeah. not – he's not Hendon. He's not Joe, which is okay. Like, everybody's mm-hmm. different, and um, it just helps to have somebody like Dylan in the room who has that natural – uh extrovert mentality and kind of that leader guy because they listen like he's older he's been there in the program and um well liked smart kid and um a lead back like i think it, it's not a big deal but it is something where it's nice to have when your quarterback is just not that he's just not the raw raw like i'm gonna get everything like, it's just not him yeah yeah and I, I think having that offensive line back just helps him and nico just yeah. have some confidence about him so yeah he just seemed a little different on saturday to me but Again, it was Chattanooga, so we'll, we'll see if he can carry it into this Saturday. But it was different, though, right, Kale? Like, it, it was especially out of the – like, it, the new wrinkle this year is something we haven't seen uh, through three years at the Hypo era is using the running back in a lot of uh, passing downs and <laughs> using him and being like, oh, no, he's going to run routes. He's going to be available, like the wheel route stuff with Dylan Sampson in the backfield. He has good hands. Um, he's good in space. Jalen Wright's a great player, but that's not what his bread and butter was. Like yeah. Jalen Wright also mm-hmm. was, I mean, his top line speed and everything else, was, he was just different than Samson. But mm-hmm. none of these guys, Jabari Small, uh, and you just go back before, and it's just different. Um, and I think that's that's a cool wrinkle this year that I'm excited because I think it's only going to help Nico uh, with check downs and different things like that when things aren't open downfield. He has someone he can turn to who he can trust um, out of the backfield to catch uh, catch the ball and make plays in tight situations. Yeah, and I think you're going to see that role build for Dylan Sampson more. They're going to have to find creative ways to get him the football. Um, it's not going to be as easy as as the inside zone all year. Mm-hmm. And when you look at Jalen Wright, really, really talented back. He was he was solid out of the backfield catching the football, but he, like you said, that wasn't his thing. And, and early in his career, actually, he struggled. It, yeah. it wasn't his thing at all. You saw it some last year with Dylan Sampson um, when he was in the game. They'd throw to the running back more because he was just better at it. He is a better all around athlete. He is better in space, and you got to get your running your running back that's good in space into space. Uh, no better way to do that than to just get him outside the tackles immediately. Mm. So I think that'll build, and and um, I, I'm interested to see how they they continue doing it with not just Samson, but you've got some athletes that can catch the football behind him as well, and in, in Deshaun Bishop and, and Cameron Seldon. So I think this the use of the running back just continues to build. Uh, Dylan Sampson's obviously the the main guy for the main reason for that, but but I think it's going to be everybody in the mix. And as much as I love Dylan Sampson the way he ran, I, I really like Selden and Bishop too. But we don't run the football, so. Right, we don't have to worry about them. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, Peyton Lewis didn't really, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where Brent Hubbs says that where it's like, you better not take a day off in the wide receiver room, especially like, I mean, wide receivers, Tennessee's loaded. Um, yeah. But running back, Deshaun Bishop, I think is their best actual tailback. Like the best actual, like between the tackles, making something out of nothing. I mean, he is so patient inside. I I love, I mean, he had that one run where he's, he's just hard to bring down. Remember he kept falling forward for like 15 oh, like, yards. I thought, like he, he scored. I, thought it, yeah. I, I thought that was a touchdown play for him. Yeah, I stood yeah. up. I kept going up and down, <laughs> kind of bobbing the, if I was going to cheer or not. Yeah. I mean, Karn's legend here. I mean, he's. He's just played the position so much. He has had so many carries in high school. Um, I just, I don't know. He's just a natural running back. I think Cam Seldon's still learning the position. Peyton Lewis is a true freshman. Bishop's been in the system for a year. Dylan Sampson's just more of a do-it-all Swiss Army knife kind of guy. Deshaun Bishop is just a straight-up old-school running back. Like, you run the eye like, here, Deshaun, we need you to go get us four yards, (laughs) find four yards for us on fourth and four. Um, And I probably trust Bishop out of the backfield more than anybody else. And 
I don't know. I, I think Tennessee, any fans who were like, oh, we need Damian Martinez this spring when he entered the portal. It's like, no, I think they're gonna be all right. I think uh, Tennessee's got four or five backs they can trust here um, once again and rotate if injuries happen. But you're in a good spot when Peyton Lewis is not needed as a true freshman, where it right. doesn't mean he's not going to be a factor all year. It just showed on Saturday that behind Dylan Sampson, you've got two guys who are just, they're all different too, which is annoying for opposing defenses. Like when they, with these right. different series, they're like, all right, who's going in? All right. Uh, oh, it's Selden. Great. We're going to get hit hard. Cause that man mm-hmm. runs with force when he hits the hole. Like he's, right. he's a big dude. He's built almost like, the exact dude. same for context for Vol fans. He has almost the exact same frame as P- Princeton fan. Like yeah. if you look at their measurables and size and like, wait, it's like, he's a gigantic dude. He's, <laughs> he's still learning uh, the position and he just, he runs hard. So I'm really high on him too. But um, yeah, no, I think running back is, uh, is definitely going to be fine uh, for Tennessee this fall. Uh, Landon, if the, uh, your biggest worry about the NC State game for Tennessee on Saturday. Is there a matchup you're most concerned about going into this game? I, I think it's got to be Concepcion. Um, mm. I mean, he's their playmaker, and and we've seen, you know, if you want to go back two years, you, you've seen Juice Wells kind of eat up Tennessee secondary before. So that's – I guess I'm, I'm, I shouldn't put that out there, but, like, that, that is a worry for me to have a really good playmaker – a good quarterback kind of having connection. Tennessee has struggled in the secondary. I do think they're better equipped this year to handle a, a really good receiver like Concepcion. No, no Rogers is good as well. Justin Jolie, the the tight end is is solid as well. Um, so I, I think it's going to be a kind of a hard matchup for the secondary because I, number one, I, they haven't faced anything like this. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them doesn't have a ton of experience. You know, I think safeties are, are going to be tested a lot in this game, especially with with Justin Jolie um, at, at tight end. And um, yeah, they got to be up for the challenge because um, if if not, if they struggle, I mean, you could see Tennessee rotate at that safety position. I think I think Jacoby Thomas is somebody who flashed a little bit um, Saturday. So you know, if they're not getting it done, I, I could see him getting some run. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a. I think Jacoby popped on Saturday. I think Boo Carter popped, especially in pass rush situations. Like he was flying up to the line of scrimmage. He's definitely comfortable blitzing. Like Boo Carter sure. is going to be a very comfortable blitzer for Tennessee off the edge. He's going to be scary for opposing quarterbacks for the next three years, is my guess. When he gets close Absolutely. to the line of scrimmage, and he's just so fast that he just gets up there, and he, if he times it right, like he's just going to be in the backfield before you can even snap your fingers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kib, I think that's for me too. With what Land is pointing out in terms of Concepcion and Rogers and Jolly and company. I can't wait to watch the tape either way on Sunday going back because this is going to be the first ultimate side-by-side test of how much does Tennessee's elite pass rush limit the vulnerability of Tennessee's secondary. Like this is going to be our first test of seeing what that looks like because does the front seven from Tennessee just negate uh, these problems where you're like a little concerned on the back end and you're like, no, I think it's going to be fine because t- you're not going to be able to attack Tennessee down the field in routes that take three to five seconds to develop. Like you're just not going to have to worry about that with that Tennessee group because the pass rush is just getting home so much and that Pierce is going to play more than 10 snaps uh, in this football game. Like I I'm so curious to see what that looks like because we didn't learn anything about that on Saturday. They were, mm. they're not trying anything downfield. They're not getting their quarterback killed. They need him for a full season because they're trying to win a FCS championship. Uh, the Chattanooga yeah. Muck. So yeah, they have to uh, operate a little bit differently, but that that's where my head's at is just, we're going to like that back and forth between the Vols pass rush versus the Vols secondary. I think that will be the ultimate litmus test here. Do you see it the same? Yeah, and actually I was going to uh, slightly go a little bit different than Landon because I think it's the same concern. You're, you're talking about how to how to defend Kevin Concepcion and, and Justin Jolly. Um, when mm-hmm. you look at how they performed um, against Western Carolina, uh, the, the run game, I think Tennessee's run defense will be fine. Um, yeah. Jordan Waters went for over 100 yards, 123 yards, but but I think they'll be fine. I, I think I it's, like that's happening against Tennessee's first Right, game. right. And, and I – I'm I'm going to say remove the linebackers from this equation. I think you it's a real test more so just for the the guys with their hand in the dirt uh, for those mm. defensive linemen because when you look I don't know in total I haven't I haven't gone back and watched that full Western Carolina game but mm-hmm. the few catches I saw where KC was able to get the ball was over the middle, quick routes over the middle. Grayson McCall struggled the ball throwing the ball downfield in the first half when they they trailed Western Carolina. 
Um, so I think it'll be a lot of quick stuff, ideally over the middle. And that's that's task that puts the task on your linebackers. Can they be a strong aid in in, in pass coverage? And I think Tennessee's gonna be asked a lot Saturday night um to blitz for maybe five guys and, and you're not able to just just send a lot and, and everyone and and hope your your four or five in the back can take care of business. So I, I think it's more so on on can your guys get home with four? Um, mm. If you can get home consistently, if you can get the ball out of Grayson McCall's hand quickly with four, Tennessee handles this this passing team, their passing game fine. Um, if you're struggling to get four home, we'll see. Um, but I mean, I think it, it, if Grayson McCall surprises me and comes out and looks looks like Nico throwing the ball downfield on Saturday, we're we're having a, a conversation of of who kind of came up on the offenses end stronger. I think. Yeah. Um, and maybe Tim Banks surprises us and, and sends a lot of really unique and good stuff um, coming his way that that's hard to read and and requiring a lot of that offensive line and Grayson McCall. But um, we'll see. I, I like the way the linebackers played fast and physical. We'll see how they do in pass coverage. I think that's on them um, Saturday. Uh, of course, it's on your on your secondary. But I, I, I mentioned this: if you're going to take a pause away from that secondary, I think it's that they they all rallied and flew around to the football. Mm. Didn't seem like a lot of second guessing when the ball went in the air and, and and was caught the few times it was and or when the ball got outside the tackles and they had to go make plays. So I to be determined on, on what it looks like with the ball um, before it, it gets thrown and, and when it's in the air. But I think after that, Tennessee, which I mean, I guess they haven't really ever struggled with that. We play with everything in front of us um, mm. for, for four years or three years now. Um, but yeah, I, I think Carolina game. Yeah, for real. Um, the amount of times we got beat deep by a tight end was laughable. Um, cannot happen Saturday. Uh, but I, I, I do think this one's on the group you want it to be on, right? In that, that defensive line. Um, I, I, I trust you'll see James Pierce in the backfield by himself a few times. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I think the first rabbits package with the Omar, um, Joseph's Pierce and Herring, it's going to hit. I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait for, to see that the first time. And it just to be like, I'm going to do the Leo DiCaprio. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to be like that, uh, sitting there on my couch, like saying that to my wife. And she's like, what's happening? And I'm like the rabbit package. And I'm just, uh, she's like, yeah, that, that's what's going to happen in my living room on Saturday night. Um, Landon, what is, uh, your official prediction for NC state on Saturday as we get out of here? 42, 24. Oh, okay. Yep. I like get it. it done. They probably score a late touchdown to, to make it a little closer, but I, I just think, this is also a big game for Grayson McCall too. Like I don't, I know we we're talking about Nico and like he's a true, he's a redshirt freshman. You know, this is a, a big game for him. Also, like Grayson McCall hasn't like played in a bunch of big games against a, a quality opponent like Tennessee. BYU Coastal in 2020 rocked. Don't you? That was, <laughs> also, that one just it exposed that we can schedule games whenever we want. Why do we right. have to do all this? Like, you, right. you can actually get it done. Why Why are we doing this? Why are we um, pretending yeah. that we can't schedule a week out and we can't make this all? And work? we don't have to play at neutral sites. Yeah, yeah we, don't we don't need do to. Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's never seen a James Pierce opposite of him. <laughs> no. No, I mean, yeah. he's played. I, yeah, no. I think my. I tend to. I don't think they're even going to get to 24. My gut is. What we see on Saturday, Caleb, is more like what we saw with Georgia Clemson on Saturday, mm-hmm. where I think it might I, I probably lean it's going to be closer than fans might anticipate at the half, or maybe it's like 21, 10, 21, 17, 21, 10, 21, 13, something like that, Tennessee. And then the second half where James Pierce has now played 27 snaps. Um, Omar Norman Lott's played 25 snaps. Um, Tyree West has played 25 snaps. And they start adding up, and this NC State offensive line just can't handle Mm -hmm. um, Tennessee bringing any kind of pressure in their defensive line and being able to rotate and keep their Leos fresh. I think they just wear on him. Like, I think this is going to be one of those classic solid verbal crockpotting where Tennessee blows it open in the second half because NC State just can't. can't protect Grayson and uh, the offensive line just gives up because this defensive line is just overwhelming. Like they're going to overwhelm and just gradually beat teams yep. into submission yep. in the second half uh, more often than not this, this season. I think I, I, I agree with b- both your all's points. My prediction has more so to do with Vegas knows everything. Yeah. Um, I believe when I checked earlier today and if it's changed, um, I think it's 10. But then it is 10 now. It was, what was it before? when I checked earlier today. Maybe it, see if I can pull that up. I thought it was a 10 earlier. I, I thought it moved up. They also were wrong about Georgia and Vandy. 
So, <laughs> Vandy, that. man, that kid. I have mixed. What do you feelings think about it. Vandy, Caleb? Vanderbilt. The Vanderbilt is the second to worst team in college football, only in front of Virginia Tech. <laughs> wow. That was a. I thought that was a terrible game. I know a lot of people in the first half, which I didn't watch much of the first half, was talking about how Vanderbilt looked better. I think they were running the football a little bit better in the first half. The quarterback carried they, it twenty six times. I thought in the second half times they looked. Both teams looked awful. I don't want any part of Diego Pavia. Like this, just I saw what he did at Auburn last year. Like Tennessee goes there. I'm not saying I'm uh, upset alert for Vanderbilt. I just know I'm not going to like it. Like Vanderbilt is going to make life a living hell for everybody this week or this season because he's a gamer, man. Like that kid is just going to keep them in games that they have no business being in. And I mean, he's if he's going to put his body on the line like that with 26 carries. I was about to say, opener, how many games can he play? If, if he exactly. Does that? I don't know. He didn't like that he was referred to as like the that the poor man's Trace McSorley or something this week. I saw. I don't know. He's got he's got juice. I don't know. He you have to have that kind of moxie at Vanderbilt. Like they've just been you, like it just is a little bit uh it's not scary. It's just a little bit like, hmm, I'd rather that not be the thing. I'd rather Vanderbilt not have a rallying cry quarterback who uh Fair. might over uh just over um overachieve um yeah. with the Commodores this fall. Because that they, offense is a little bit fun a little bit fun. Don't forget though, they did almost they should have well, oh, they played they the almost lose. lost that yeah. game. And and not only then they also should have won it in regulation. Yeah. This and is such a Tennessee podcast. Like we're over here, yeah. like we're doing NC state predictions. And we're like, oh, I, they're gonna I like, let's that. talk about Vanderbilt. I lied that they on are. it. So I'm pretty sound. Um, a lot bet Virginia tech plus three and a half. So if Vanderbilt makes that field goal. It hits. What was your exact tweet? I had several. Wait, <laughs> your tweet know. was like, um, Virginia Tech plus three and a half. Never made such easy money in my life. <laughs> they did go up seven when I did that. Just, just a note. They did go up seven. They scored 14 in the fourth quarter. It was a good bet. Ooh. Bad beat. Bad beat. Bad um, beat. <laughs> well, I mean, it got real bad when Virginia Tech could have won it in overtime. That's what really game. broke my heart. Because they <laughs> could have just outright won it in overtime. Um but yeah, I, I think I'm gonna go. I guess I'm still I'm taking Tennessee to cover, but around that minus eight, I, I think it's a 38-28 ball game. Maybe a touchdown close to get it to make it look interesting. I don't. I I still I still want to see this offense produce at a high rate um, for four quarters. Obviously, again, you saw it against Chattanooga. I think the the biggest thing, and I get it's just part of Tennessee's offense. It's always going to be a part of the identity, but. You, you can't go back-to-back three and outs, for example, um, against any team, really. But against NC State and, and at a neutral site, that'll I think it'll I think it'll still be at least 50-50, maybe more Tennessee fans, um, but certainly not a home game. Um, so we can't go back-to-back three and outs where we, we run 90 seconds off the clock. Um, and then uh, Mike Eckler decides to let Jackson Ross punt right-footed when the kid was born with a soccer ball on his left foot. Um, or an Aus- Australian football. I, I don't know, but he's he's left footed. Um, so you can't get in these these position battles, these field position battles. Um, I, I don't think it's so much can the defense not get scored on. I, I think it's can your offense not put you in bad situations um, too often. And I, I don't think this offense will. And it's why I have them winning by ten. It could be more fourteen. Um, I think NC State's got enough weapons that they could make it interesting. I don't think it's interesting for four quarters. I don't think Nico's turning the ball over field position wise. Um, so I, I think ten point game right now is fair. I'd love to see it go go higher than that, um, but I kind of need to one of those like need to see it first. That's fair. I don't want that. I don't want this to be a close game late in the fourth. I want. I don't want that to be where I'm at. at it 10 was not on Saturday. It was easy, stress free. Yes, <laughs> I yeah, want stress free crock potting in the second half. I, you I you get the ball with three minutes left, up ten. You're you're okay. Yeah, Dylan Samson can, can get a first down and milk the clock. That's the other thing too. It's like the rotations. I'm really curious clock. what the rotations look like on Saturday. Like how yeah. how tight do they get in this kind of game? How many wide receivers do we see? I I don't know. Yeah. It. It's going to get tighter. I, not on the defensive line. I think they're always going to rotate. Gardner's always going to rotate there. But um, receiver especially. I am very mm-hmm. curious what that rotation looks like um, on Saturday. But we'll, we shall see. Uh, Landon, Caleb, what can the good folks check out from you over at More Important Issues this week? 
Yeah, we got a show, I guess, on Thursday. Caleb's going to run it in studio with uh, our, our producer, Joey Boots. Um, and I, I may call in or, or do something. But, yeah, check us out on Thursday. We'll be live in studio at Fox Sports Knox. Um, also, go check us out on our socials. You can check us out on X or Twitter, whatever you call it, at more underscore issues. And then also Facebook and Instagram as well. There you go. Go tune in. Listen to the good folks over there at More Important Issues. Go listen to them on Fox Sports uh, Knoxville and all the good stuff that they got cooking this football season. Go to the tailgate, too. Don't have them throw away yeah. food. Like, that's nah. not... Uh, we don't need come that eat. anymore. <laughs> yeah, come eat. If you're going to do anything else, you might get... Like, we learned, you might get some tickets. You never know what you're yeah. going to find there. You exactly. Know? exactly. I love it. Caleb, Landon, thank you so much. Safe travels this weekend, and I'll talk to y'all very soon. Awesome. Thank you. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas Podcast. <laughs> Hell yeah.